unlike Japanese kendo, Chinese kung fu, and fighting styles of other cultures. The Filipino martial art of Eskrima does not have a single uniform universally used by all practitioners of this art. Even worse, a number of the designs of Filipino martial arts uniforms used today have been appropriated, or some would probably say, copied from uniforms of other Asian countries. In light of the obvious need for redesigning and standardizing the Eskrima uniform, I will present what I call the uniform of the warrior, or uniforme ng mandirigma in Filipino. And afterwards, I will explain the concept of my design. Later, I will discuss why it would be beneficial for Eskrima to have an original uniform that stands apart from those used by other cultures, especially now as Filipinos pursue wider international recognition for this martial art. In the development of my design, I drew inspiration from Filipino history, specifically focusing on the attire worn by native warriors from various centuries, hence the uniform's name. Rather than simply adopting Filipino attire from a single point in time, I tried to pay homage to the various warriors who fought for and in defense of Philippine independence. Represented in my uniform's design are influences from three definitive chapters of Philippine history, the pre-colonial, revolutionary, and republican eras. For the pre-colonial era, I adopted the chaleco, which was an unbuttoned vest top whose length normally only went as far as the belly button. A number of ancient native rulers who resisted Spanish colonization, such as Raja Suleiman, were depicted wearing a chaleco, as can be seen in a statue in Manila dedicated in his honor. Beyond historical considerations, choosing the short-sleeved chaleco was also done for a practical reason. With the Philippines being a very hot and humid country, it makes more sense to adopt the chaleco over the long sleeve uniforms used today by a number of schools teaching Eskrima. While it is not necessary, my design also incorporates solid purfling at the edges of the chaleco to give this white uniform a touch of color and contrast. In keeping with the pre-colonial theme, I also designed some possible insignias based on ancient Tagalog characters. The first insignia features my calligraphic interpretation of characters representing Cebu. The reason why Cebu was chosen was because of its ties to two significant events in the martial history of the Philippines. First, this province is associated with the famous Battle of Mactan, where native forces under Lapu-Lapu resisted and defeated the celebrated explorer and conquistador Hernando de Magallanes, or Ferdinand Magellan in English. Second, Cebu is also significant as it is acknowledged as the birthplace of the Doce Pares Escrima organization. The second insignia I created is my calligraphic version of the word Cayumangi, or brown, in reference to the brown race. Although Filipinos are technically Asians, culturally and historically, Filipinos have been regarded as a brown people rather than a yellow race by the former colonizers and occupiers of the Philippines. In colonial times, to be an Indio, Moreno, Cayumangi, or Brown, all had a negative connotation, since possessing dark or brown skin was seen as a sign of inferiority. This way of thinking, unfortunately, continues to exist today, as many Filipinos still aspire to be white and associate lighter skin with beauty while having darker skin is seen as being less attractive. Instead of being a source of shame, I wanted to celebrate our brown skin heritage by using the word Kayumangi as an insignia. On a separate but related note, I would even go a step further and suggest that the purflings and insignias on the uniform should be brown, and that the ranking system should be reordered so that brown will be considered the highest rank in Eskrima. But this is just a suggestion. Ultimately, the decision of the type of insignias to use and the ranking system should be left to the discretion of the various schools of Eskrima. The insignias presented here are only intended to serve as examples. Moving on to the revolutionary era, two components of the uniform was influenced by this period, the 19th century salakot 
and the Filipino revolutionary's pantalon or pants. When discussing headwear, in this case the salakot, most Filipinos automatically think of the conical hat common throughout Asia. There was, however, in the 19th century, during the Philippine Revolution, an ornate spherical salakot with a spike on its top end, which was used by some Filipino revolutionaries. Some have claimed that this particular type of salakot is associated only with the elite members of Philippine society, just as they say that the Spanish language was only used by the Filipino upper classes. But in actuality, a number of photographs and paintings from the 19th century disproves this claim and shows ordinary people, Filipino farmers, sabongeros, and soldiers wearing this type of headwear. The revolutionaries themselves also used a spherical salakot, but given the heavy Spanish influence of the time, the majority of Filipino revolutionaries in surviving photographs were a buntal na sombrero, or a bunto hat in English. While I too often wear this type of hat to go in my barong Tagalog, or with my haranista attire, I decided not to incorporate it into the design of the uniforme ng mandirigma, because besides not providing any real protection to the head of the escrimador, or the escrima practitioner, the buntal na sombrero resembles the hats used in the Venezuelan martial art called El Juego de Garrote Venezolano. Given the similarity of garrote and escrima, I did not want to adopt headwear that may cause some people to confuse the two fighting styles, especially since both primarily employ the use of a baston or palo, which are wooden sticks used for training and sparring. As for the design of the lower half of the uniform, I simply adopted a plain, light-colored pantalon since many of the revolutionaries wore such pants before the adoption of the standard Rayadillo uniform of the first Philippine army. The only change I made was the addition of solid colored purfling to match the purfling of the chaleco. Finally, representing the Republican era, that is, the period after independence from Spain and the adoption of the 1899 Philippine Constitution, I chose a paja or sash tied to the left side of the hip similar to those worn by Filipino officers during the First Philippine Republic. This paja is intended to replace the karate-style belts currently being used in a majority of Filipino martial arts schools. As can be seen so far, each and every article of my design is Philippine-based and inspired by the many patriots who sacrificed their time, and even their lives, for the freedom of the Filipinos today. But it is not only the Filipinos of the past who are making sacrifices for the people. There are also brave warriors today fighting on the front lines. I am referring to the many Filipino doctors and nurses who do not carry rifles and bolos, but who face an invisible enemy that is taking the lives of Filipinos by the thousands. The original design of the uniforme ng mandirigma did not initially have a face mask, but the present coronavirus pandemic and the dangers being faced by the medical frontline workers could not be ignored. To honor them, I included a face mask in my design, but in order to stick with the overall theme, I incorporated the sun of the Philippine flag with the eight rays representing the first eight provinces that rose up in revolt and which were placed under martial law by Gobernador General Ramon Blanco during the Philippine Revolution. It may seem a bit ethnocentric and xenophobic to want to remove the foreign influence in the design of the Escrima uniform and replace it with a primarily Filipino theme. However, I have no hatred of non-Filipinos, not even those who formerly colonized and occupied the Philippines. Moreover, I do not even believe it is completely possible to remove all foreign influence, even if I wanted to, because anyone who understands the complexities of Philippine history will know that Filipino culture itself is a product of Eastern and Western influences because of our colonial past as part of the Spanish Empire. In the case of Escrima alone, earlier practitioners often used Spanish words such as espada, bastón, cerrada, de mano, and so forth, not because they had any intentions of appropriating these words, but because at the time, Spanish still served as a secondary language and a lingua franca in the Philippines. In time, with the U.S. overthrow of the Republica Filipina, or the First Philippine Republic, and the subsequent American occupation, 
Spanish would be replaced by English. But the Spanish terminologies used by the Filipino pioneers who preserved and formalized this martial art continue to be passed down, including the very name of this martial art, Escrima, which is derived from the Spanish word Esgrima. I have no opposition to such foreign influence because it reflects the actual history of the Filipinos. But when foreign culture is appropriated while having little to do with Philippine history, then in my opinion, that is nothing more than cultural theft. One could argue that using the Japanese uniform as a source of inspiration for the Filipino uniform is justified on account of the Japanese occupation of the Philippines in World War II. But I would argue that their presence did not last long enough to actually influence Filipino culture significantly, certainly not enough to warrant the use of Japanese designs and terminology such as kata and do, as in escrido. Whether or not escrima can be purged of its colonial influence is not my concern, and certainly not my goal. If anything, the fact that Filipino culture is a mix of East and West is what makes it unique. My only objective in pursuing the Filipinization of the Filipino martial arts uniform is to remove escrima from the shadows of the other better known and well established martial arts. So long as the design of the escrima uniform is based on or influenced by other existing uniforms, escrima may continue to be mistaken for or overshadowed by the other fighting arts it copies. If the aim is to draw attention to escrima, then setting it apart should be the objective, not making it blend in with the other Asian fighting systems. Yet, simply designing a uniform that is different, just for the sake of being different, is meaningless and will be regarded as much of a joke as a McDojo uniform. To be taken seriously by foreigners and appreciated by future Filipinos, the Escrima uniform must not be made up, but instead should be grounded on Philippine history, culture, and tradition. While I realize I am not much of an artist or a designer, I hope that the uniform I sketched out will obtain acceptance among the various schools of Escrima. At the very least, I hope that the concept of redesigning the uniform with the distinctly Filipino theme in mind will be embraced and will serve as a blueprint for whatever design should be adopted in the future. On a final note, besides redesigning, another goal to keep in mind is the standardization of our uniform. It may seem pretentious to say, but I envision Escrima as an Olympic sport. But we cannot expect this from happening when we do not have a standard uniform and cannot even agree upon a single name. Those unfamiliar with Escrima will be utterly confused, not realizing that our martial arts belong to the same family but can appear to be completely separated from one another because of the many uniforms and different names. Whether or not my uniforme ng Manderigma becomes the standard uniform used by all schools of Escrima is not important. What matters most is that we Filipinos stop following trends and actually start setting them. Using our own history as a source of inspiration is the key to coming up with a uniform with a unique and distinctly Filipino design. Mabuhay ang Escrima at ang lahing kayumanggit.